So what is up you guys and welcome. So today we're gonna be wet sanding and buffing the Civic Type R inspired EK Coupe to make it look that much more beautiful. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Yeah, I heard. So what is up guys and welcome. So like I said, we're gonna be wet sanding. We already got a little bit started. So the main purpose of wet sanding is just to get rid of any orange peel at all or any imperfections at all that are on the paint, that are on the finish. And it's gonna make the car look that much better. Now since this process is so tedious, me and my pops came in on the weekend and we worked on the car a whole bunch. Today's Monday, you're probably seeing this video later in the week, but I just wanted to get you guys caught up. So we went ahead and finished almost all of the car. I mean, check out the roof. You see how the reflection is just extremely crisp, extremely clean and extremely clear. You can see the window right here and the car looks like glass. So this fender I saved so that way I can walk you guys through the process. So you see here how the lights like see this light right here how it's kind of kind of shaky or this one right here So that real subtle orange peel is what the wet sanding is going to get rid of. If we walk over here where it's already done and you look at the light or just any reflection, you do not see the orange peel at all. So that's the purpose of wet sanding and buffing. So what I'm going to do first is wipe down the bumper with just some soap and water. So this bucket that I have, this is where my sandpaper is sitting and a good tip is let the sandpaper soak as soon as you get to the shop. Start to let the sandpaper soak so that way by the time you get to your part, the sandpaper will be nice and soft and ready to go. So I wipe it down now to just make sure there's no dirt or anything on it. And then I go for my thousand grit sandpaper. Now any big flat areas like on the sides of the doors or the hood or the roof, I'd recommend sanding with a block. That way you don't get any real deep scratches. But an area like this where it's like nice and small and around the corner, I just use my hand. Make sure when you're doing this, you do not push with your fingertips. Make sure your hand's nice and flat. That way you don't get any deep scratches. So once you have your 1000 grit sandpaper, wet it one more time. I like to leave my rag in one hand and have the sandpaper in the other. So that way I can get this nice and wet and then just start sanding. I don't know if you guys remember my list a couple videos back, but in that list I was kind of saying how the next step is easier if you do the previous step better. So this is a great example. Since I laid out the clear coat nice and flat and smooth, I don't have to spend too much time with a thousand grit sandpaper. If there was a whole bunch of crazy nasty orange peel, I could recover and still do it, but then I'd have to spend a lot of time with my 1000 grit sandpaper. So with the 1000 grit, what we want to look for is that there's no more orange peel. And the only way that you can tell is by getting the fender kind of wet and then looking in, looking at some light, looking at the finish, kind of working with it, seeing what's going on. And then if all your orange peel is gone with a thousand grit, then you can start to kind of smooth it out. And now we want to move on to our 1500 grit. Once again. Now I like to finish with 2000 grit. Some people would argue that you need to go higher to a 3000 or even a 4000. But what I find to work just fine is finishing with 2000 grit. So now that sanding's done, I mean, it's gonna look good. 
it still obviously looks kind of funny because there's all this, the bubbles on it from the soap and water mixture. And if I didn't mention, this is just a mixture of soap and water. It's just some Dawn soap, non-scented, nothing too crazy. Dawn soap and water just to give a little extra lubrication when I'm working my sandpaper. But it looks good now. Let me see now that there's no bubbles on it. See, you can already see how much better it looks, but once we dry it off, it's gonna look a little dull. Now looking at it after it's buffed, it's all dull. Here's what's done already. See how it's nice and reflective, and then we got this. where it's extremely dull, you can't see any reflection in it whatsoever. It just looks like a really bad, flat paint job. So that's what the buffing is gonna fix. So the first step in getting the paint to become shiny again is buffing it with a wool pad, and I just like to use Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. I know some people swear by the 3M products, but it's three times the price, and I found that this works just as good. So we have our wool pad, and I just put a little compound on it. And you have to do this with a high speed buffer. So I like to kind of start off slow, cover the area. And then once I have the compound over the entire area, then I crank up the speed a little bit. And then after I kind of work it in for a little while, then you gotta take your microfiber cloth and then wipe away the compound. And it's important for me to make note, you guys, you don't always get it all on the first try. I mean, sometimes I buff, see there's some clouds right here. It kind of looks like a little cloudy. That's the way I can describe it best. And mainly I got it pretty good. And this process, I know this video is gonna be however long it's gonna be, but this is really a long process and it just goes to show if you want your car to have that finish that's that much more glassy, more of an HD finish with no orange peel, you're gonna have to put in the work. So now that we're done with the Ultimate Compound and the wool pad, the next thing to do is to go to a foam pad and to go up to the polishing compound. And I'll put all product information in the description below. That way it's all organized right below and if you wanna buy any of this stuff for your car, it's just right there. So this is the same process. Just put the polishing compound right onto the foam pad, just a little bit, and I do the same thing. Work it in a little bit slowly. So now what this does is it gets rid of any of the finer scratches left behind by the wool pad, because the wool pad is a little rough, and that's what you need to pull it back to kind of get it a little shiny again, and this is just kind of like finishing work. So after that's all done and you wipe off any of the stuff that got left behind, look at the finish. So there's the light that we were looking at before and then look at outside how clean it is. So hopefully that gives you guys a better idea of how to wet sand and buff. And again, this was done over the entire car. You don't always have to get lower areas like below the side moldings if you clear coat really well because areas like this aren't gonna have sun on them and it'll still look good. Again, it always goes back to however good you did the previous job is how much harder you're gonna have to work on the next job. You do the clear coat real nice, you're not gonna have to spend much time wet sanding and buffing. So now that the fender looks as nice as the rest of the car, I mean, we did the headlights, the entire car if you hadn't seen any of my headlight videos on how I restore headlights there's a video way back it's not as good as some of my current videos cuz again it was way back I'm trying to improve with every video you know how it goes so the next thing for me to do is obviously the hood still off I actually just finished this over here 
see how nice you can see the clouds and the reflection. I did the same exact process on the hood. 1000 grit sandpaper, 1500 grit sandpaper, finished off with 2000. Then I did ultimate compound on a wool pad and then polishing compound on a foam pad. Now the only thing left that I'm gonna do at the very end, I like to save it for the end because it's kind of like, you know, the cherry on top, is the entire car is gonna be waxed. And you guys know how to wax cars, just wax on, wax off, miss some Miyagi. Yeah. So now that the wet sanding, buffing, polishing is pretty much all done, I wanna get the car put back together. We still got these missing, we got this window trim missing, all the door panels are off. I'm gonna need someone to help me put the hood on. If you wanna volunteer, let me know. And so we're wrapping it up. I gotta put the wing back on because obviously I had to take the wing off to wet sand and buff the trunk. And that's what I'm gonna do. Let's just get the car put back together. So I wanted to go ahead and put this window trim on, but I mean, it doesn't look good. Look how it's all kind of messed up. And that's real common for Civics of this year. I mean, you know, 96 through 2000, that's common for all of them. That always happens. So rather than putting it back on ugly, I'm just gonna take my time and refinish it and then put it back on nice and brand new looking. But I don't have the paint with me here that I wanna use for it. I like to use kind of like a wrinkly paint because that's how it looks from factory and you don't have to spend as much time getting it nice and smooth because right now it's a mess. That'll make it look more factory-like and that'll make me spend less. What the heck, man, I gotta get these higher. That'll make me spend less time fixing it so it's a win-win situation. Once again. Of all the things I really love about Hondas, one thing that I absolutely hate, hate, is the door panels. What were you thinking, Honda? These things are trash. So besides the door panels being so trash on all of 96 or 2000 Civics, what can we do about it besides just kind of take our time and really make sure that we don't crack them and pack them with hot glue if they crack and all that stuff. So let, let's see how the car looks. Like I said, I don't want to put this piece on until this trim. On the way home today, I'm going to get some paint for this window, this lower window trim, so that way I can paint it. But all in all, Check out the car. So I know you guys have been asking me about these wheels and we have these wheels just so dirty. The reason why they're so dirty is because he's running hawk pads on this car and if you guys know anything about hawk pads, they're track pads. They're not meant for regular street use and that's why there's so much brake dust everywhere. You wash these wheels one time, you take it up the street and back and it's gonna look the same way. So we're kind of just ignoring it. He's gonna get some street pads to run on the car so that way the new wheels aren't gonna get all crazy messed up. And speaking of the new wheels, when I get home today, I'm so excited but the tires are at the house so that's going to be a video coming up real soon you're going to see the volk ce 28 ends mounted on the car and that's going to look beautiful so since this project's kind of coming to an end and i'm thinking of what am i going to do next and i really enjoy doing projects that are like this is my brother's car it's low stress i mean he's not demanding he's very reasonable unlike some of the customers that i've had in the past when they're they're just demanding it's just different when i'm working on a different person's car rather than someone who's family so ultimately i personally would rather just work on vehicles that are my own and then i can eventually sell them but the problem with that is with my views and being a younger youtuber not younger in age i mean my youtube channel just recently started i don't have the money coming in that some of these big youtube channels have so i was kind of thinking about dabbling in merchandise to kind of get some more money coming in let me know in the comment section below if you would be interested in anything like that or what you're interested in i need your guys's help because ultimately i'm going to be trying to sell it to my viewers and i don't want to make anything that's too unreasonable or overpriced or anything like some of these other guys do what i'm thinking to start off with is hats t-shirts and lanyards or jet tags or let me know in the comment section below you guys i'm really asking for your help on this one but with this car with this build anything else that i need i'm gonna have to wait on josh to help me out help me put the hood on and he can help me clean up the interior a little bit more so as soon as this project's over another one's coming in What's happening, boy? 
So this car is what I'm gonna be working on for the next, eh, maybe just one of the next videos. We just gotta do some small stuff on it. It's actually an OG subscriber of mine, so I really appreciate that. If you guys wanna contact me for work, you can just message me on Instagram. It's just Bodie Vision. Follow me on Instagram as well. So this is just gonna be some kind of quick work. We're not gonna do anything too crazy on this car, but if you're interested in seeing what's going on, make sure you subscribe. And if you wanna get notified to join the notification gang, shout out to the notification gang. Make sure you hit that bell where it says you're subscribed to get notified when I'm updating a new video. Since we're coming to the end of this video, it's about 90 degrees outside, beautiful sunny in Orlando, Florida. Ah, there is only one thing left to do. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe. You know what it is, YouTube. I'm out.